Hey guys, this is part number two in the Acro B build. If you haven't seen part one yet, I go over all the details of the individual bits and pieces that are going to make up this build. And I just try to take a close look at the parts. So be sure you check that one out. I'll have a link in the description. But what do you say? We get this hardware assembled. Overall, this build looks incredibly easy. It doesn't look like we're going to have to do any soldering at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, the only real tool that we're going to need, uh, if I can find it here, look at this. I got a whole pile of tools and I can never find what I'm looking for. So really about the only tool we're going to need to put this guy together is just a small eyeglass style Phillips screwdriver. And that's just going to be for the tiny screws to get the flight controller attached. Well, let's put this thing together. Okay, I guess we need to prep our frame. And the first thing is to decide what is going to be the front and back on the cockroach frame. Now I'm going to hold this upwards as to what I like to make the front. And I'm going to explain to you why. If you look at the back side of the frame, maybe I can show it here as well. If you look at the back side of the frame here, you can see there's a big open hole. Or as opposed to where I do the front, there's actually a couple of additional braces here. So I figure a couple of things. A, this is going to be better in a collision because you have a little bit more support here. But also B, when you have your flight controller installed, you're going to have room for the USB. So hopefully you can plug your cable in from the bottom side, no problem at all. Um, and that's why I like to orientate my frame in this particular direction. So the braces angle in, point to the front, back we have a nice big open hole once I decide which way is going to be front uh, I think we can put our motors in and here's the thing with these unicorns is they're a taller motor than what would normally fit in this Inductrix style frame or the cockroach or whatever you want to call it so we're gonna have to trim some of these nubs on the bottom side of the frame in order to get the motors all the way in what I wanted to do was just line up the motor. Let's see if I can hold it here. These things are kind of slippery. So I'm just going to line up the motor with the top of the frame so I can get a general idea of about where I want to cut that nub. And it looks like I want to cut it a little bit shorter than halfway. I have myself here a pair of flush cutters. These should allow me to be able to get in and cut those little pegs off. Let's try it out. So I'm gonna shove it in and just snip off the peg. It's actually pretty easy. Just shove them in there and snip the peg. Okay, frames modified. Got all the pegs trimmed. Let's get this plastic out of here. And I like to install my motors before I put the flight controller in. Left front, right hand turn motor. You can tell your right hand turn motor by the red and blue wires. Very commonly any motor that you're gonna use for this style aircraft is going to be identified by the wire colors. Red and blue, right hand turn. White and black, left hand turn. In order to get your prop spinning in the right beta flight direction, left hand gets right hand turn motor, right hand prop gets left hand turn motor. Let's get these guys shoved in here. When I slide my motor in, I like to line up the wires with the ducts. And we just need to give it a push. It is pretty darn tight going in there, this unicorn motor, I must say. Nice. All four motors installed. Let's begin to prep the flight controller. The kit comes 
with these little rubber grommets or gummies or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, they're running away. We're going to need to get these installed in all four corners of the flight controller. All right, that's ready to go. And now I just need to get it slid into the frame. Got to put my back screw in. And I'm going to pull my antenna out of here because it managed to get itself wrapped in there pretty darn good. So I think I'm just going to stretch it across the board. Normally I would like to point them up, but man, this thing just is really thin and kind of worried about it. So I'm going to try to protect it underneath the other components. Hopefully that's not an issue. Now you can see on the bottom all the room I have to access the USB and also the room to get the wires through the frame. That's why I orientate it the way I do. Some people might argue and say this needs to go in the back, but this is how I like to do it. So that's how I'm going to do it. If you want to do it the other way, do it the other way. I don't care, but this is why I do it this way. Let's finish the stack up. All this stuff should just simply land right in place. Now the pins on the VTX and OSD are just incredibly tiny. I could see these getting damaged easily. So if you take this apart, just be, you know, of course we took this apart so we could take a look at the pieces, but just be very, very careful lining this up. Make sure it's straight before you start pushing it at all. There we go. Okay, just take your time with this and you should be okay. I'm going to put it into place now. Slide it the rest of the way. There we go. That's it. Let's do the camera. How about we twist the wires, keep them nice and neat looking, twist them right up, looks a good, and let's plug it into the connector. This connector is keyed, so I'm going to go with this should only plug in one direction. I wouldn't force it, And there's plenty of room to have the camera wire go under the leg of the camera mount itself. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's get some of the other screws in it. Again, don't over tighten and smush your grommets. If your grommets are smushed, the screw is too tight. That's it. It's that simple. Okay. There's majority of the assembly. Looks pretty good. I like the angle on the camera. Let's get the motors connected up. I'm going to twist my motor wires to keep everything neat. The kit comes with these bands to help attach your motor wires. Just roll them right on up. And plug in the motor. Wow, the, these wire lengths are ideal. Normally I'll take the extra wire and I'll kind of tuck it under the frame a little bit, but you don't even really need to with these. So that's great. All right, let's wrap up the others. Just take your time when you do all this. These parts are so small, it can be incredibly easy to break something. All right, we're getting there. Let's get the props on. So let's take a look at the props before we actually put them on. This here is the correct orientation. When you look at the props, 
you want to make sure that the open side is facing inward because this is how they're going to be spinning and scooping air. So it's going to grab the air and push it down. All right, props are on. I think they look pretty good with the yellow frame. I don't really want to stick the antenna up on this because this is how they get broken. I'm thinking I might just leave it laying down something like a mullet. What I am going to do though is put a piece of heat shrink over the tail end of this antenna so it does not break. Uh, let's see what I can find for that. All right, this piece should fit nice. Just trim it to length. I'm going to use a torch to shrink the tube. Don't use a lighter. That's not the right way to do this. Use hot air or a butane torch. There. That should help protect the tip a little better. And I hope this is going to stay in here for me and not end up in the props. All right, we'll try that. We're going to run it like this. Okay, I think we're done here for now. Here's the fully assembled Acro B. I think it looks pretty nice. So make sure you guys check back for part three where I'm going to get into beta flight. And we're going to update the firmware in this and we're going to go through all the settings, bind it to my Tyrannus. And then the next part after that, after I've had an opportunity to live with it, we're going to compare it to one of my standard builds and I'm going to give you my final opinion and thoughts. Please check me out on Instagram at Derek and his drone. If you haven't already, click all my things, tickle those buttons, do whatever you like to do. Maybe leave a comment, subscribe, definitely subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.